Welcome to the Steven Samino Says Boom Podcast, issue number three. Boom! Yeah, boom! <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Steven Samino Says Boom Podcast, issue number three. I'm a host, John Samino, with my co-host. Steve, ready to rock and roll. And our Otto from the Grotto from down under there with our technical support. We love you, Otto. Thank you yes, for always helping us out. Matrix. Yes, well, thank you very much. You know, I'm just along for the ride, man. I just want to hear good stories. And I can't wait for this one today. Okay, okay. Last episode or last issue, we had Steve talk. A spotlight and Steve talked about Thor 184 to 190. Correct, Steve? That's right. And 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 it changed Steve's life. Now, what changed little John Samino's life? Oh my God. I'm I've been salivating for this episode because you know me, Steve. I can't think of anything else. Defenders from 1977. Defenders 46 to 51. That's what we're going to talk about. Steve, do you have any, tell me any of your experiences with the Defenders? Uh, well, you know, again, it seems really odd. I, I swear we should have been twins. Uh, I love the Defenders, and I'm going to say something rather bold. I like the Defenders more than the Avengers. Um, me too. I love, I mean, I, when I began collecting, I was like, I want issue one through 152. The giant sizes and the annual, and I will do anything to get them. So when you want to go into Defenders Land, woo, I'm right there with you. Hey, and Otto, do you know who co-created the uh, the Defenders, or actually whose idea was the Defenders? Could it be the great Roy Thomas? Ooh, yes, yes, yes. All right, it was kind well, of I'm unintentional. Gonna, I am going to be on the outside here because I wasn't really a Defenders fan growing up. Because oh, dear. The, the team in the 80s oh. with the 60 cent books, I really didn't like the team. However, upon researching, I think what we're going to talk about is going to be really good. And I might have to go out and find these issues because I think John's going to tell us some good information. <laughs> today. Well, well, Steve, I'm going to tell you something. And Otto, let's throw Otto in here too. Otto loves the Hulk as, it, as I'm obsessed with the Hulk. But these were the issues that got me into the Hulk and more or less the Defenders because I was collecting Hulk like you, Steve, back then, sporadically. I was a young kid. This is the mid 80s. And I remember I went to this comic book shop is when I was in the Cape. It was called Park Nostalgia. I said that on a, a past episode. And I remember talking to the guy and, you know, he heard me talking about Hulk. He was a, he was he was a, the young kid that worked at that store. And he goes, oh, you like the Hulk? And, you know, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, it was so free to talk about superheroes at those comic book stores at that time. It was such a sanctuary. It was so awesome. And he goes, have you ever read The Defenders? And I said, yeah. Yeah, I go, no, nah, a little bit. I don't know much. And he goes, well, if you like to see the Hulk go nuts and you want to see, like, the Hulk really rampaging, you have to see issue 50. And I said, really? And then he said, yeah. He goes, but I don't have 50 in the store. He goes, but I have 51. And so... He shows me this splash page, and it was like the aftermath of the destruction. And I was like, it was like literally seeing like boobs as a little kid. You're just like, yeah. it was better. It was better seeing por better than porn. That was my comic. I looked at that, and he, and I could just see the destruction. And so I was hooked. But he didn't have fifty, and he didn't have the issues before it. So it actually took me. Years later, when you're sporadically kept getting back issues, to actually finally read the story. But I did get 50, you know, early on, and I needed to know more. So anyways, when I finally got the whole run of Defenders years later, 
I actually read the whole thing, which actually turned out to be a really good issue. I mean, a great series. So 46, we start out with 46. Oh, no! <laughs> Who remembers Scorpio, the prelude? Now, okay, this issue right now, just basically the team, Doctor Strange quits. Luke Cage quits. The girl Red Guardian quits. And Nighthawk is left there. Like, what are you doing? So they didn't just quit. They be, they got kicked out of the Sanctum Sanctorum. So ha Nighthawk is pissed about this. So it's Nighthawk, Hulk, Hellcat, who just came from the Avengers, and Valkyrie. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? So Doctor Strange kicks them out, and they have to go to hang out at Kyle Richmond's, uh, like his estate there. So they all basically leap over there. And they all kind of hang out there. And, and Kyle Richmond's pissed off because he's thinking, like, now I got to lead these guys. And he doesn't have a good relationship with the Hulk to begin with. So he doesn't like that. But when they get there, they go into one room and they see that Scorpio is there. Scorpio, who was first, uh, first appearance was in The Shield. That was uh, the, the Jim Stalin character. Uh, uh, yeah, Jim Stalin co-creation. So anyways, they basically fight him. They don't know why he's there. They fight him. And then he takes off. He knows he's a little bit outmatched and he takes off. So it's just a basic prelude to what's going on. And, and what's great about that is, like I said, you see the dynamic. They're all kind of just, they're not in unison. The Hulk's always going crazy. And, and Kyle Richmond is like, like I said, he, he's, he's trying to be an overachiever. He has this burden on his shoulders that he has to lead this team. So that's how the issue ends. And he's just kind of figuring out who the hell was that guy? What just happened right here? Now we go to issue 47. Oh, no! oh right there. <laughs> issue night moves. Now this is kind of, this issue right here kind of is kind of like a side issue because I noticed they had a, a guest scripter here. His name was uh, um, David Warner. John Warner. Yeah, no, John Warner, excuse me. And, uh, and so they had him as a guest scripter. I don't really know what happened, but what's good about this is still elements of what just happened in the previous issue. Um, go on. And it's basically Valkyrie wants to go talk to Dr. Strange. Hellcat wants to go back to the Avengers and just see what's just, see, you know, just tell her what, what, what she's been doing now. The Hulk leaps away and Kyle Richmond just doesn't like what's going on. And he's kind of contemplating what's going on. But you find out that in the background, these that what makes this story so good is that it has a lot of little subplots. And, and it was very easy to read and get into, especially for a young kid. And and you see that Jack Norris is uh he's there and he gets attacked. He gets jumped by Nick Fury and some shield agents. You don't really know why, but Moon Knight sees this happening. And so ne n n Moon Knight kind of breaks it up and uh you know Nick Fury and them said that they're going to come back later and they take off. So uh, also in this issue Valkyrie gets her new costume from Klee when she's looking for Doctor Strange. But this was the interesting thing, and you might remember this, Steve, that Nighthawk, I mean, Hellcat goes to visit, goes to Avengers Mansion, and Wonder Man is now a team member, okay? And and she already left the Avengers, and she didn't know this. So what happens when there's a misunderstanding? What happens in Marvel when there's a misunderstanding? Of course, they, uh, Wonder Man smashes the hell out of Avengers Mansion with his bare hands. M making now, mistakes. Uh, one, one quick thing, John, before yes, you sir. move on. Now, uh, first things first, you know, Scorpio was co-created by Jim Steranko. Oh, I said Starlin? I'm yes. sorry, right. Now, uh, in issue 46, there's a subplot, very, very important that you missed. No, I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. I was I, I purposely because, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. When I was younger and I read this, I was <laughs> fascinated with the elf with the gun. Yes. And in this issue... He gets run over by a truck. <laughs> and that apparently is the end. Well, for years, I was always like, ah, oh, God, Steve Gerber must be furious. However, one quick note, guys. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pick up this. This is the Marvel Masterworks Defenders, okay? This is volume six. There's a, a, an introduction by David Anthony Craft. Oh. Please 
Go and read this. He's no longer with us. He gives us some great insights. And he explained when Steve Gerber saw that little panel, he laughed and said, I'm so delighted. So anyway. <laughs> no, right. Steve Gerber, let's just do a little side note right here. I, the reason why I didn't mention that is because it was it was kind of the ending of it. And then yeah. and then because of these weird thing that Steve Gerber was doing in the issues just for fun. But I don't know if you know this, but and then a few years later, they kind of they kind of went back onto that plot. Do you, do you know? I think. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I know it very well. In Defenders 125 by yes. J. M. Dematis. Yeah, Dematis. They, they revealed the entire history of the uh, elf with a gun and joined it up in a huge story. I actually like it, but yeah. again, it, it goes against what Gerber wanted because yeah. apparently one day he was on the phone with Sal Basama and Sal said, give me something different to draw. Let me <laughs> let me draw something different. And so don't don't say that to Steve. Steve goes, all right, how about an elf with a gun? <laughs> Mom, God, Marvel was so good back then. You would never be able to do that today. No, Marvel. no, and 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 that was a and that was a brilliant. It was a brilliant uh, little sub like sub story going on there. And Gerber really didn't want anything to do with that. He just wanted that 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 the elf to die, and and that was it. I know I know he didn't like the whole backstory with it because there really wasn't any, and it got a little too weird for me with the Dematius things. And it was kind of like, you see the fun. Gerber just did it for fun. And Dematius had to make it like serious, and like, he made the whole backstory. So yeah, I didn't. Sorry, Steve. Good for you. Tell. Thank you. I was. I didn't mention it because it. I knew it was just kind of like it had nothing to do with anything. So well, thank yes. you for point. Yeah. Well, that's why well, you're believe here. Believe me. Uh, in another ep in another one of our episodes, believe in me or issues, we're going to be talking about some of my defenders, and we're going to get more <laughs> deeply into this. We're going to go so deep. We're going to be up to our necks. But anyway, <laughs> please carry on. Okay, so we go back. Hellcat is battling with with uh, with Wonder Man and Avengers Mansion, and Moon Knight, Valkyrie. They show up and they see her hurt. So a more of a misunderstanding. They all fight, and then finally, finally, Hellcat. They 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 see something on the intercom, and they notice that now he's an Avenger. So they stop, and they're like, "This is a big misunderstanding. Sorry about all this stuff." But they also hear something from uh, there, there's also a, the last panel well the, the on the last page you you hear nick fury he actually puts a, a pa uh, like a pa and they're looking for uh jack norris you we don't know why they're looking for jack norris but 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 now we get into the as steve likes to say the weeds of the first two issues was just a prelude now we get to issue 48 what else? <laughs> Who remembers Scorpio Part One? Sinister Savior. Okay. We find out that Scorpio, he's a very dour guy. Like, there's a lot of problems. And then you notice that he's talking very, like, you know, he's talking to Nick Fury with such disrespect and disdain. And Nick Fury's just there taking it. And you're kind of wondering, like, why does he hate everything so much? And he's very depressed. Okay. And he basically wants domination of the world. But why? What, what, what? There's more to it after. It cuts back and it's you go, you see the Avengers and you see Jack Norris and he's talking to them. And they're, they're, they're saying, why do they want you? And Nick Fury shows up, basically says, Jack, come with us. Norris is gone. It was easy as that. But, Nor but talking to Nick Fury is kind of weird. And then Norris is kind of thinking, I don't know what's up with this. But here's a little subplot, too, that made this story great. Jack Norris was in love with the Valkyrie at this time, who was, uh, what was her name at the time? Um, uh, Barbara. Barbara Norris. Barbara Barbara Norris. Norris. She, he was in love with Barbara. And Barbara is inhabited by the Valkyrie. So she has nothing to do with Jack. So Jack is looking at his wife, hurt, because she wants nothing to do with him. And he loves her, but she's this other being now. And that was great because you, you feel like his pain throughout all these issues because all he wants to do is be with his wife. I which, was making it worse. She didn't want anything to do with males. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and let's just throw out there Jack Norris, Barbara, Barbara um, uh, Norris, and uh, Valkyrie, all created by Roy Thomas. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Just throwing that out there. So anyways, they basically... 
they basically bring Jack Norris to Scorpio. And you see Scorpio, like, what is he, like, he starts talking to Norris about his plans, baby. And he also, like I said, he's very disrespectful of, of Nick Fury. You don't know why. He has, he has, you would never see this in comics nowadays, would you? He has the Jack drink a beer. It's actually a Schlitz and all that. No stuff. way. Yeah, yeah. But here we see what Scorpio is doing all about. Otto, the first splash. Yeah. There we go. He's creating something. As, as you can see. He's trying to, and he's, I love what he says. He goes, do you think this is all abnormal? All he wants to do, he goes, I'm alienated. He, he doesn't fit in with society. So what is he doing? Creating his own people. I, I should, I, I don't know if they, I don't know if they actually, I don't want to go into what he's creating right now, but he's creating people so he can relate to them. But what people are they? Oh, we'll find out. And more during the issue here, Moon Knight is kind of stealthy through the, uh, he's look, he finds out what's going on. He, he falls into a trap. Scorpio, Scorpio um, gives him a beer and he's going to basically kill him and all that. Jack can't believe it. And uh, obviously Moon Knight will, will escape. But you learn a little bit more about, about what, like I said, like this melancholy, this melancholy, excuse me, this melancholy character of, of Scorpio. And I didn't have any idea who Scorpio was before reading these issues, but I started feeling for him because I kind of related to him because he was an outcast, but you still don't know why. So anyways, what he wants is $500,000 from Kyle Richmond. 500,000, <laughs> this is 1977. Give him a break right. on it. Yeah. Give him a break. So anyways, he meets Kyle Richmond, comes to see him, and then he tells him while Kyle Richmond brings the money. He wants to meet him as Nighthawk. Does he know the two? Of course he does. He's like, I knew it was you. So Kyle Richmond basically throws him the money, but he uses the Zodiac key to, to teleport. He didn't want the money. He really wanted Kyle Richmond. He wanted Nighthawk. So basically what he does is he uses the Zodiac key and teleports him away, which we go into now, issue before, number 49. Before go ahead. Move on. Before we move yes, on. Please. Let's just uh, take a little gander at the creative aspect of the issue. Now, of course, David Craft is doing the uh, writing. Scripting now. Yes. He's also doing the coloring. Uh, you may not know that, but he's also doing the coloring. Now, at this time, the artist is Keith Giffen, and his art is changing. If you start off in his earlier issues when he becomes onto the series, he's closer to Sal Buscema than anything else. He's sort, it's sort of in between. By now, he's moving into his own style. And I remember when I was first reading this, it sort of reminded me of Kirby in a way. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about uh, Keith Giffen, right? Yes, Keith Giffen. And this issue is inked by Dan Green. And they do a really good job. And now I'm talking, right. you know, because I'm coming uh, coming at it from, I'm a massive Sal Buscema fan. I mean, I'm massive. But within a couple of issues, I began to really love Keith Giffen's work. Yes. It was so intense, so many panels, so much stuff going on. And I was like, this is not my usual Defenders. This is a new era of Defenders. And Absolutely. I was, I'm with you. And uh, at this time, Keith Giffen, talk about working. Oh, 9, Keith, panels. Let me just take it back again. Like at this time, like I said, I was sporadically getting issues. And I was already a Kirby fan. When I saw the issue that the guy was showing me, I was like, oh, my God. Even I realized it was like I loved Kirby. And this was like me getting Kirby light. And I was like, oh, my God. Thank God. these I loved it, too. See, see, this is where we connect in this wild world. We were on the other sides of the world, but we were collecting at the same time. The same comics were out there and our same desires for almost the same characters. Otto, throw you in here for a second. What? What were you doing in the mid '80s? Did you even in know the about '80s? I wasn't collecting these books, man. I was going after more of uh, GI Joes, and I was going after uh, well, not even GI Joes. I was going after early, early X Men um, at the time, the Thirty Senses and the uh, Avengers. So, to be honest with you, this came out in what was this out in eighty? 80... Nineteen seventy-seven. Nineteen seventy-seven. So young Otto was only six, really. So he was, you know, you know, no, no, but right. right. I... Otto, I wasn't collect. I was going back now and getting. Yeah, yeah. Back. The same thing. I had to go back as well. 
and you never got, you never went into a store and found all the issues. It was, right. It, it, you had to piece them together, which was the most annoying. Yeah, no, it, this it, wasn't it, in my there was realize. no way to get them. There was no way to get them, and that that was the hunt at that time. It that was really the hunt. And yeah. auto auto comics were so cheap. Okay. I remember getting a a a a, a Journey into Mystery one twelve for five dollars, yeah. five dollars, oh. and then a, an Iron Man and Submariner number one for four dollars, high grade. But we didn't know. We didn't care. No, they were just no, there. Oh no. Okay. Oh, no. So back to the story. Oh. Now we get to issue 49. This Got is it. where the Samino erection starts to get crazy. Because <laughs> what is this saw? What is this saw? What is this issue called? Rampage. They, and, and I know I didn't mention uh, David, Cra um, excuse me, um, um, yeah, David Kraft much, because we'll talk to him at the end of this when we we'll wrap that up with this. But okay, Rampage opens up with Moon Knight looking for the defenders. Why is he looking for the defenders? And then we see Kyle Richman is now caught by Scorpio from the previous issue. But now we start learning the backstory of Scorpio. And who is he? He's actually Jake Fury. He's Nick Fury's brother. And you're kind of like, oh, so that's why Nick Fury is hanging out with him. But he was always the loser. He had down on his luck. Did not relate to people. Now, like, once again, this was so classic for somebody kid like me that didn't relate to people and read comic books and probably a lot of kids that didn't re read comic books. So he ends up getting this power. And what does he want to do with this power? Oh, we'll see very soon. We, we'll see very soon. What we now we learn. We learn when he's starting to brag and talk to, uh, to um, Jack Norris and stuff. He is making his own zodiac of beings that will not just listen to him, but will relate to him because he does not relate to the world. So he is creating his own team because the original zodiac were all killed off. When were they? The, the I know the first the zodiac team was created by Roy, and uh, they were in Avengers. Do you remember? I don't remember uh, that team, but what happened to them? They were just all criminals dressed up as. Uh, as the Zodiac, is that correct? Yes, yes. And then, of course, Engelhart used the uh, uh, the Zodiac in issue 120, 121. Uh, but years later in the West Coast Avengers, they had killed off the uh, original uh, Zodiac and replaced them with robots. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So we go back. So he's making this these human beings to so he could, I love that. There's something about that. Like he, so he could relate to them. Okay, so they know Jack Norris and, and, and Nighthawk are, are kidnapped because Moon Knight shows up and he's like, we got to get them. So they know where he is. So they know that he's doing something big, but they need somebody. Who do they need? That green-skinned Goliath. But the Hulk just wants to be alone. Leave me alone. Don't worry, Steve. You're going to get in here because you're going to be reading some dialogue in your Hulk voice. Okay. <laughs> Now what? Okay, so basically they see the Hulk. The Hulk goes into some park, and you know people all running scared. So he just sits there and he starts eating their food. So behind him, Valkyrie, Hellcat, and Moon Knight show up behind him, and they're asking him, you know, you gotta, you gotta help us. And he doesn't really like Nighthawk. He doesn't really care, but he just wants to be left alone. Humans, you know, I don't want to fight anymore. You just use me to fight, and I love that. Oh, the Hulk loves to fight. So what does Valkyrie do? She's like, we got to get him to come. So she kicks him and he, from behind and he smashes into the, the table and all that. And then you just see the Hulk look. And he said, and then the Hulk is pissed. So you got Moon Knight, Valkyrie, and Hellcat. What can they really do against the Hulk? But they need him to follow him. So the Hulk is pissed and he basically, ch he's, ch he's chasing them all through New York. And in a second, Otto, we're going to show them why. But yeah. okay, so he's he's going all through New York. Don't go yet, Otto. Hold no. on, trigger finger. <laughs> okay, but right before while the Hulk is going crazy, it goes back to Scorpio, and now we learn why his Nick Fury is putting up with all this crap. Why is he putting up with all this crap? Oh, you you know, go ahead, Steve. Tell me why. Why is Nick Fury listening to Scorpio, getting pushed around and degraded? Because he's not really Nick Fury. No! no. What is he? He's an LMD. Yeah! 
that was so cool. Even when as a kid, when I saw that, I was like, it was so uncharacteristic. And then he's an LMD. So he's just putting all his angst into yes, this. And for those who don't know, that's life model decoy. Yes. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So we go back to the Hulk. So they're leading him through New York, New York, New York. And so finally destroying things. It, it's just a fun read if you can read this and what the Hulk, Hulk is a little sneaky too. But anyways, they finally go there and then they have Moon Knight drop on the, the headquarters where Scorpio is and the Hulk attacks and he drops in. So Moon Knight jumps out of the way, the Hulk crashes in there. So you look, oh, the last page is so good, especially when you're a Hulk fan. Steve, come on, when you saw this, Jack Norris is going, I don't think that's Moon Knight. They're like, I don't know that. And it's the Hulk. And then you see the Hulk facing the entire Scorpio and the entire Zodiac gang. And it's just like Hulk has fought Red Man before, but this time Hulk will destroy you all. But okay. Now, all that is great. But what Otto is going to show you in a second, Steve, is you didn't see that in that book. And this is why Marvel Comics were the greatest things in the world. In the letters page, they show, Keith, uh, Keith Geff and um, show, draws this little map. Ah! The map of the Hulk's path of destruction, where he started and where he chased them all, all the way to where so, um, Scorpio was. Look at that. When I was a kid and I saw this in the letters page, the, the map of the Hulk's path of destruction, it literally, I saw God in these in this little panel. I never saw anything like that. Steve, did you did you know that that was in there in the letters page? Yes. And what is really oh. sad is they don't reprint that in the Marvel Masterwork, which... Right. Mm, I mean, I was just like, oh, guys, are you kidding me? Because it I, really is. It's like a little cherry being dropped on top of the icing. Oh! <laughs> and look at how Geffen, Geffen and Bender, Bender Matt Company. Did you see Matt Company? Did yeah, you see that? Matt Company, yeah. Oh, my God. That, as a kid, it made the Hulks, it made it seem more real. Like, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It, it was just... And such an incredible little cherry, exactly what you yes, said. And what, I think what it also did was it separated, again, once again, it separated Marvel from DC. Oh. Because here we are. If you were a kid and you lived in this area, you know this area. Now, of yep. course, I'm in England, I'm like, well, but that's all fan. I didn't even know whether it was true. But those guys or anyone who's reading it that lives there, they're like, this is happening in my area. They're referencing oh. my area, which means the story gains more and more relevance. So this, again, it separates, you know, this isn't Metropolis. This isn't Gotham. This is, you know, uh, New York. So you know what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, oh. it, again, uh, Marvel being ahead of the game and having the good fortune back in the day when Stan was, you know, creating the Marvel Universe with all the other guys to, make, to place it in a real world so young oh. kids like john could go oh my god yeah i know i've been to times square yeah you know so that's yeah it. i understand that, it oh my god and that's what we did even as kids if i remember the first time i went into new york i was saying stuff like oh my god that's where the that's where oh there's really is a hell's kitchen oh my god you were like crazy and okay so you see the hulk's path of destruction and now Issue number 50. Well, hold on a second. Just before oh. we move on, I want to give okay. credit. Again, the inking on that issue is by oh. Mike Royer. Yeah. And Mike Royer, of course, when he's when his inks hit Kirby, wow. Uh, so when he when his inks hit Geffen, uh, oh. wow. The, Who and, did the cover on this? Oh. Steve. Was, Steve. How come we're so alike? This is, it's actually stupid. It's too, it's too, the, the, when you saw this, I was having the exact same reaction. It was just so good. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It just captivated me. It, these issues, Otto, are the reason why I'm like this. It was just, it was like you said, Steve, in the, in the first episode, it was like your universe. They were talking to you. They were sure. in 
And I used to look outside. I know this sounds crazy, but even on the bus when I was going to school and all that stuff, I would look outside. I'd be like, did the Hulk come there? Or if I would see a construction site, I'd be like, that looks like the thing in the Rhino had a fight. You know, like, are they fixing that? You know, something like that. Like, it just, you related to it. You felt part of it. And there was that such energy in these comics. Oh, geez. And what's also very said, special about this right now is, that, you know, we've been mentioning Moon Knight in a very blasé fashion. But yeah. right now, uh, Moon Knight is about to appear on the, you know, the screen. And yeah. there's a lot of collectors that are hunting down all the Moon Knight appearances. Yeah, this is huge. This is a and, big thing. I mean, and this so is... now they're going through and they're like, "Wow, they've got to fight, get these defenders issues." So more eyes, yeah, more eyes are going to see this material because uh, whenever I do a sale and I bring yeah. this out, people are like, oh, "Oh, oh, oh, I need those issues. I need to get my Moon Knights." And this mm-hmm. is a beautiful Geffen and Mike Royer. Oh, this is a magnificent, oh, magnificent. Book. And that's the first time he's in in the Defenders too. Like that's the first time he. But how perfect him being in it because he's an outcast. You know he's yes, an outcast. He's not in any other team. He didn't go in any other team. No. Oh, okay. All right. Issue issue fifty. Here we go back, Mister Otto. Yep. Then I'll look at this oh. right here. Now, can this I just one... give you my? I love anniversary issues. Okay. And the fact that this says Fantastic Fiftieth Issue tells you that it's an anniversary issue. Oh. And I think Dave Cockrum did a little bit in this because I'm a huge Dave Cockrum fan, and I remember this actually, being important. Actually, that's Al Milgram with Dave Cockrum Inks, correct? Really? Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All okay, right. I'll let you but, guys take over the show on this, but I appreciate this. Okay, but Steve, I have to tell you a little backstory about Fifty. Before I got any of these issues, my my aunt in the late seventies got me this activity book set of the Hulk. It had four little books, you know, the maps. And the uh, but they used a lot of real art as the background of, of these of these uh, of these like games of these games in those books. I remember clearly a word cross, and it had this picture behind it. And when I saw issue fifty, it was the first time I put two and two together that they took the art from the comics and they put it in their product. See, like I said, I'm naive, I'm young, but I'm learning. I'm learning. And when I saw that cover, I was like, oh, my God, that's where it, it just met. Look, I'm, I'm almost crying because I saw myself as a little kid discovering this. And it was just so amazing to discover like they would like that's how they used the products. Like, you know, the, the, the a lot of the John Romita art and all that stuff. They use the art from the comics on the products. And they do that today. I know it's simple and I know it's 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 easy. Like people would be like, yeah, that's right. But for me. I didn't know. And just discovering it was amazing. I remember that. So this issue cover is singed into my brain. Okay. The story opens up with Hulk remembers you, Red Man. Escaped Hulk before, but now Scorpio must die. Who remembers Scorpio? Part three. Okay. So basically what happens is you see Scorpio with, and they introduce all the Zodiac that's there, and they make a big battle. So it's a big rumble. Okay, now this is where it gets awesome with the Hulk. So the other guys are following the Hulk in, and they're noticing that the Hulk is fighting all these guys, and it would be a little bit easier to, like, you know, help help the Hulk out, uh, Valkyrie and uh, Hellcat and Moon Knight. And so they attack, too. So it's just this big melee. And then you see Nick Fury walking off, and Jack Norris is like, where are you going? He takes off and all that stuff. Okay, the battle's coming. Now, Otto, this is where... My love for the Hulk, if it couldn't have gotten greater, it did. So we see the first page here. Oh, Oh my God. We look at this, and as the Hulk hates water and all this stuff, you notice Ares hits the Hulk from behind while he's fighting, uh, he's fighting, and like everything's going on. You see the Hulk goes crazy, like it's knocked into this water. Now, Steve, can you please read to me the last two panels? Please. Hulk has been in same stinking water before. <laughs> Hulk hates water. Hulk will find man with horn head and Hulk will make him pay. Oh, okay. So the Hulk basically attacks back in. Nighthawk escapes. Oh no! Next panel. Okay. Look at just the top four panels. Oh my God. The Hulk going crazy right now looking for Ares. Now, please, 
Steve, can you read? Okay, not the first top two panels, but but the not panel one, two, three, panel four and five, the ones with the Hulk. Can you please Scorpio seeing the Hulk going nuts? Can you just please read those four and five, please? Hulk will pull whole factory. Apart. No, no, no. The one before okay. it. The one before it first. The one, one before. before? It. Hulk wants you, Hornhead. Do you hear Hulk? Okay. Don't, Hulk don't worry. will pull whole factory apart to find Hornhead. So he's going. Cr when I read that, Otto, you don't understand. You don't. I know you think you do. Only I don't. I don't. <laughs> he's going crazy. Okay. Now. We can't get to the next panel until a second here, but we see that Scorpio took off, right? Scorpio takes off, and then he notices something while he's looking. He noticed that his whole team isn't there. There's a few that are missing. And who's missing? Pisces, Capricorn. He noticed that they're defected, like there's something wrong with them. But Virgo. Virgo was supposed to be his love. That was supposed to be the woman for him, but she was stillborn because he, if you noticed, when you read through the issue, he made them all come alive prematurely. So there was some defects. And the most important one of all was dead. So you see him crying and he grabs her hand and he said, Virgo, how could you do this to me? And he's crying. Okay, that's a great somber moment. But we go right back to action. Oh, no. Next panel, please. There we go. No, the next no. one, you asshole. I got it. I got there it. it. <laughs> look at this one. Look at oh, this Oh, my one. God. Otto, look. Just look at this. Please look at the top panel. Okay. Steve, you need to read what the Hulk is saying in that, that, that top panel. Please. Where is Hornhead? <laughs> He's destroying everything. But then we look in the next panel. You see Ares is creeping up behind him. And he sees the Hulk is going nuts. So he knows he can't face the Hulk. So what is he trying to do? He's going to hit him again from behind. But look what happens. Who saves the Hulk right there? Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Now, I was I was pissed. And I was, I'm gonna, was going to save this at the end. And I asked David. I love David. He was such a great guy. Hired by Roy Thomas, too. Sorry about that, Roy. I, I know Roy gets embarrassed when he watches these and I talk about him. But, but. I was mad about this because I wanted the Hulk to smash him. But, and I asked David, how could you let Nighthawk save the Hulk? And he said, the Hulk finally trusted him. And then in the next panel, the next panel, they're all gathering together and they work as a team. I don't, I don't show that panel, but it's a splash of all of them getting together and they beat the crap out of the... Uh, out of the Zodiac, which was so awesome because they that's what made this so good is like the Hulk game, Nighthawk gained the Hulk's trust and they all worked as a team and to kick the crap out of uh, out of uh, the Zodiac. Okay, now we get to the end. Now, so that was awesome. The Hulk going crazy and all this stuff. But if that wasn't enough, we get to the last part and you see Nick Fury talking to, Zo uh, to Scorpio about what's going on and what's happening. And, and Scor Scorpio says some great stuff because after, after Virgo died, there was nothing left for him. He says, all my life, every time I ever believed in anything or had faith that the future would get better for me, I've had that false hope knocked out of me and found myself back on my knees in despair. That's what he's talking, that's what he's talking to Nick about. And Nick is trying to say, oh, ch cheer up and all that stuff. He can't do it. And you know what he does? An unbelievable panel here. And he says, he says, give me the gun, Nick. So Nick, because he's an LMD and he doesn't, this LMD loves Zodiac, loves Scorpio. And he says, there's a great panel. And he says, the gun, Nick. And he doesn't want to do it. And then you see Jack Norris and, and, and Moon Knight running toward him. And then, boom, boom, blows his brains out. You can't tell me that isn't awesome. And if you don't have a heart, you've got to feel it. Auto. I don't know if you read these issues, but you've got to go back and read them because it's a lot more detailed. But that is powerful, mm -hmm. powerful stuff. I never saw 
that kind of angst from a character because it, they're always getting away. You know, you watch the cartoons. I loved how the LMD didn't want to do it. It loved it loved his brother, you know, even though it wasn't all real. But there was no reason for him left to live because of Virgo, and he kills himself. And so now we go into issue 51. Now, the reason why I put, picked 51 is the it just wraps it up in the first issues. We don't really care about the ringer and all that stuff, but the first few issues are fantastic. S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up. Nick Fury's there. They see the LMD. Now, this is what got me hooked on this series. Otto, please show me this, buddy. The next panel. Look okay. at that. <laughs> the destruction of everything. Everybody's trying to like do it, and you see the Hulk back there. But, but, Steve, can you? This is what made it even so much better. I'm sorry, David Kraft does not get the recognition he deserves, but this is absolute genius. Steve, can you read what the Hulk says back there? There's one, two, three, four bubbles. Now, while everybody's doing all this work, what does the Hulk say back there? Birdnose stops Hornhead from sneaking up on Hulk, then ignores Hulk, talks to stupid Moon Man instead. Hulk wants to have fun. No one <laughs> listens to Hulk. Hulk wants to do more things than smashing. No one listens. No one ever listens to the Hulk. No one. So the Hulk just wants to chill out and have that. <laughs> they're just doing all, they're cleaning up this mess behind him. I love the naivety of the Hulk because he caused most of this damage and all that stuff. But like he, he still, after he's all done smashing, he just wants to hang out and have fun. It was the innocence of that too. And it was so beautiful. It really made me fall in love with the Hulk. And like I said, it made me fall in love with David Kraft because he doesn't get the, the recognition he deserves. And I will just say this really quick. In my top 20 greatest Hulk stories of all time, this ranked as number 15, the this saga, 46 to 51. And when I put it in my blog and I put it up there, I got contacted by David Kraft before I even knew him. This is before I met him through Roy and all that stuff. He said to me, he sent me this little message. He said, thank you for recognizing that story. He, he said, that was, he goes, he goes, I, it, uh, he goes, I never get, he never really got much recognition. And I said, and I told him that this was unbelievable. The only reason why it didn't get rated higher, it was because it was more of a team book than a, a single Hulk story. But I told Steve exactly what I'm telling you guys now about how much this changed my life. And he was honored. And when I finally got to meet David, he is, first off, Roy hired him, such a big, he was such a such a Roy fan and all that stuff. But when I met him and I told him my love for these issues and I said to him, this changed, those issues changed my life. He was so honored because he was somebody that wasn't really recognized and never got the respect he deserved. But as I tell you, those issues are so, they're superhero issues. It was like, I understood where the cartoons came from, where, where they came from. That for me, I don't need this woke or angst and all that stuff that they put out today, all that garbage, all that rehash shit. This, if anybody wants to read a pure superhero story of good, triumphant ups and downs, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50 and 51, please pick these up. Read it and you'll see the genius that David did and just... And Scorpio isn't even that big of a deal, but they made he made him so deep, so melancholy. You felt for him, and I felt for him. Steve, go ahead. You you can you guys can take. I know I've been going on and on, but I literally this was sat this was this was sacred to me. This was thank you, Otto, for helping me with this because I always wanted to talk about this story, and I don't know what happened to the, the comic dealer guy. You know, he's probably dead now. I don't know. It's a million years ago, but I thank him for turning me on to these issues. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, when it comes to the the villain, of course, Scorpio, um, it was really refreshing because still at this time, even though it's 1977, a lot of <laughs> a lot of the villains were sort of one-dimensional. Uh, they had a goal. They were going to conquer the world. They were going to destroy the world. They were going to do something. They were going to become emperor of the universe. This story, it's not like that. And as John said, it is very deep. Now, it gets even deeper. Mm. Because if you read the introduction to this uh, in the Marvel Masterworks, 
David explains oh. how deep he went and how everyone missed it. Now, oh. um, just in case you don't have the book, he explains that he put all these little clues I've been using in. the essentials. I've been using, but go ah, ahead. Yes. Go, Steve. But in yeah. the uh, introduction to this, and that's why I tell people the Marvel Masterworks, you know, they have introductions by the creators, and David is no longer with us. Can you imagine if he was here right now? Oh, oh. but he would, he, be, he would be a guest. He would be yes, a guest. Definitely. And we would both be slathering and we'd both <laughs> be giving him the uh, respect that is due. But his words are in this introduction and he reveals that Scorpio was actually gay. Oh. And he also reveals that Virgo was a man and that was going to be his life partner. Wow. Oh. Uh, this is 1977. Okay. Wow. Didn't I didn't know that back then. No. Okay. That's how far advanced David Anthony Craft was. Okay. Wow. It wasn't just Magneto screaming and shouting, going to blow up the world. It wasn't Dr. Doom saying, I'm going to conquer because I, I'm, I feel like I, this story has levels. And if you want to peel the onion, there's so much more. When you're a kid, you don't understand this. Okay. But as an adult now, and Otto, I'm sure that you're going to, when you read this. Hell yeah. Because you're, you know, you're going to be able to peel this onion and go, oh my God, because it really is magnificent. And finally, a second point: the splash page where we see the destruction. I remember looking at that for what <laughs> hours, and I thought to myself, <laughs> I, don't so think, I don't think even Sal Basema could have drawn all of that. It goes on. For, I mean, how long did that take? All the damage, yeah. all the pixel all over the floor, the glass. It's a complete and utter disaster. So. Yes, after this point, I was like, oh, my, wow, I really love uh, Keith Giffen. Uh, and, of course, unfortunately, Keith you know, was going to go to D.C. pretty soon. Uh, but needless to say, uh, this made me a Keith Giffen fan. It changed my perspective and also gave me a, a, a new uh, respect for uh, Scorpio and also this uh, writer that I had never heard of before, yeah. David yeah. Anthony Kraft. They, and, and you know it was like I said when I was a little kid and that guy showed me that panel like that that splash page of all that destruction it like it opened my eyes and and another thing that that uh, that got me like we were talking about this there's humor there's so much action there's so much melancholy there's so much like depression it it is a complete story and very. It goes everywhere, up and down. Is innocence in there too, with the Hulk and all that stuff? I, I just can't believe it. And I, and and I was a Virgo, and so when he, I, I related to. Him, I'm a Virgo, so I, it really did because. Yeah, I'm a Virgo too. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, Steve, we're crazy. Look at this, another thing we discovered here. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was incredible. Otto, you have any any last words for this issue? Uh, no, this has been a great ride, man. I, I enjoy kicking back and listening to this. But I'll tell you what, though. Um, when I, I, I saw the Moon Knight stuff, I thought that was great when I was looking at this and I was seeing that and I said, this is fantastic, more Moon Knight to go with. And then I was looking at the splash pages, but you know, not to rehash this page, but this page, these two pages have so many things going on between the Hulk, Nick Fury, we got Valkyrie in the corner, just everything. And just the battle covers alone. Um, and the 50th issue right here with everybody. But oh. I will say though, this by far is one of this is an amazing cover right here to see the Hulk in his body like that with Moon Knight coming up from the air, Valkyrie and Hellcat. Yeah. That's Al Milgram. That's Al yeah, Milgram. That is screams color. And what else I like about this too, is the logo of the defenders with the red background and the white, that subtle bit of red makes this cover pop. I'd love to see this book in high grade. Cause this is, this is a great cover right here. Yes. Yeah, not well, just enough. I, uh, you know, it took me years to find my 10.9 copy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and not to, but the cover matched the story. Right. You know, how many, how many, how many comics today can you say that? Since from the 90s, okay, it had a great cover. Sure. Read that story, you're throwing that in the trash. This had everything. And, 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 and Otto, you want to know what else really quick too, that from that last splash page, there's humor in there with the Hulk and then even the medic. And, and then there's seriousness of what's going on. Everything is there. And it's just so perfect. So this is respect for David Anthony Kraft, this episode, because he deserves respect. And he was such a nice man. 
once again, hired by Roy, loved Roy, respected him so much because he gave him the job and all that stuff. Roy saw him. He knew what he was about. And this, I think, is his finest hour. And maybe he doesn't think so. He laughed, but he was so appreciative when I was telling him this. And like I said, some of these writers have been so thrown to the side. Okay, yes, there's Kirby, there's Stan, we know this, but there's still these other sub guys that people never heard about that they changed lives. And that though, that series changed my life for better or for worse, but it really, really had an impact on me. And I, 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 I loved comics. Th that made me love. That was just another reason why I loved him so much. I just want to read the first two uh, little paragraphs here of the introduction cool. because it, it segues quite nicely into what you just said. Introduction by David Anthony Craft. It says, how did you break into comics? I'm often asked. My answer, I didn't. I was invited. Marvel editor-in-chief Roy Thomas made me an offer I couldn't refuse, except one of only two editorial staff positions under him, editing the entire line of color comics by day and write by night. <gasps> Mr. Roy Thomas, once again. How can you deny that guy? And right now, really quick, I'm just going to say this to anybody watching or in the future or in the past. The Mount Rushmore of Marvel. If you don't think it's Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Steve Dicko, and Roy Thomas, then you don't know what you're talking about. Because Roy has done so much behind the scenes. Yes, I know Roy is my best friend and I manage Roy and I promote Roy. Yes. But I only talk about his accolades. And I never have to I never have to lie about it. Everything he's done behind the scenes. He wouldn't be in the position if he was in if Stan didn't trust. And Stan trusted him wholeheartedly. And no. And the, the two great editors after Stan was always Roy Thomas and Jim Shooter. And I can tell you for a fact, despite their differences and despite some of their quarrels, they both respect each other. And Jim Shooter will always tell you how much he respects Roy and how Roy saved. So David Anthony Kraft is just another one of those guys down the line that you never heard about, but thank Roy Thomas for, for giving him. And I have to thank Roy once again for giving me these comics. And that it's just, it's just unbelievable. So David Anthony Kraft, rest in peace. This yeah. is dedicated to you. And I hope you enjoyed it because you meant a lot to me. I'm actually starting to cry. Otto, I love you. <laughs> thank you so much for this episode, Steve. My fellow Virgo, it, the only thing where difference is, is I weigh 170 pounds. You weigh like 270 pounds. <laughs> Not quite, about 255. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm really happy. We're like the Hulk changing. I'm Bruce Banner, Otto's yes. the guy in the middle, and then yeah, right. <laughs> you have the middle. But, but thank you very much. And for everybody else out there, thank you. Any last words, Steve? Anything? You know what? This has been so much fun. I'm looking forward to more stuff like this. And uh, pretty soon, we're going to actually have some creators that can actually deliver some more stuff. And we're definitely going to be talking about Roy and about his editing. But I also want to thank Otto for, uh, you know, allowing this little platform to exist without his, you know, uh, yeah, mental powers. Thank Both you, Otto. Me and John would be sitting there with rocks, clanging them together like this, going, it's not working. Ooh. And we'd still be talking about this, but nobody's hearing us. Yeah, no one listen. We're back shouting in the sky. <laughs> and really quickly, I just want to say, you guys have been informed about the guest stars I have lined up, and it is a huge list, correct? Some of the biggest legends and some people you don't know that are behind the scenes and have been there and uh, have been with some of these creators. You guys, stay tuned. The only reason why I don't get them a little sooner is we got to get Roy first. And that's going to happen. We got Roy's got to be first. So thank you very much, everybody. And come back for our episode number, uh, excuse me, issue number four. So the Stephen Samino uh, Says Boom podcast. Thank you, guys. Boom. Boom.